Alrighty guys, so um, what we've done so far is we have checked our map sensor, our manifold absolute pressure sensor. Um, we've made sure the tube was not damaged. We've cleaned out the nipple. Um, on this truck, the nipple was uh, stopped up. So we've cleaned that out. That did not fix it. We pulled our EGR valve just to make sure that it wasn't gunked up with soot. Um, we found that clean. And we have pulled off our exhaust back pressure sensor in the EBP tube that goes to the uh, exhaust manifold. And we've made sure the tube was not stopped up. And we've made sure that the nipple on the manifold was not stopped up. And we just kind of glanced at the sensor and made sure the sensor was not, you know, sooted up and uh, made sure that it was clean. So that's kind of where... Um, you would stop for just kind of visually checking, you know, for those of you guys that at home that don't have a scan tool or anything. Um, once you've kind of cleaned those, if you if the codes don't go away and the truck's still running rough, um, it's going to be hard to kind of go any further. Um, you can pull off the intake, the and by intake I mean uh, the air filter housing intake that goes up to your turbo, and you can make sure that your turbo wheel spins. Um, and that it's not loose, um, which would tell you that your turbo is done. Um, um, it should spin freely. It shouldn't wiggle back and forth. Or if it doesn't spin, then you know, you're not getting any boost. Um, but as far as checking your veins and stuff, it's going to be hard without a scan tool. So now, um, now that I've done all that, um, like I said, you, you, some of you guys out there might get lucky and it might just be a dirty, you know, tube or a dirty EBP tube that's causing your issues. And all you have to do is clean that out and that saves you hundreds of dollars. Um, but like I said, if all of these things have kind of kicked out, um, for this problem, now we're going to move on to the computer. Um, like I said, with my scan tool and I'm going to show you guys what I'm going to do to actually figure out what's wrong with it. Because unfortunately for us, um, the cleaning of all of those, uh, tubes and nipples did not fix this truck. So we're still at the same spot. Um, so now, um, this is where the mechanic or this is where you need to get you a scanner. Um, like I said, there's some good ones online you can get that don't cost thousands. Like I said, this one's like $4,000. But for those of you guys at home, there is some that you can get, um, you know, off of Amazon that will do the stuff that you'll need just for, for whatever. Um, one good one for six O's that I like to use. Um, it's not really a scanner, but, um, a scan gauge. You can get them at your parts store. You can plug it in. It'll tell you a lot of different PIDs that you can get on there. Um, boost pressures, uh, FICM voltages, ICP, uh, pressure, um, all of that stuff. And it's just, it, I think it's like a hundred or 150 bucks. And like I said, you can actually mount it in your truck and use it as a monitor. Um, or you can buy you a nice edge monitor, um, that has all the PIDs on it. Um, that would be a good start that could get you with most of this, um, that, you know, you could probably diagnose something at your house, whether or not, you know, if you don't have, if you're not building 500 PSI on the start, you know, you can look at your ICP pressure on a scan gauge and be like, oh, I'm only building 200. That's why my truck's not starting. I have a high pressure oil leak. So um, I can put a link to that in the description. That's a good one, or like I said, an edge. But anyways, we're gonna get on this computer and I'm gonna show you guys what I'm looking at as far as uh, my boost system goes. All right, guys, so uh, we're here we're on my scanner and uh, at, right now I have my, uh, uh, exhaust pressure uh, PIDs and my uh, manifold absolute pressure and on this scanner the Barrow it doesn't actually give me a uh, PSI PID it only gives me a voltage PID but uh, when the key is on and the truck is not running your uh, EBP and your uh, map should read about the same as well as your your Barrow um, and it should they should all read about the same uh, PSI which is um, like I said 14 that one says 14 4 14 1 so like I said they're reading pretty good when the when it's just key on engine off and then once the key is on your barrow should never change um, but like I said I don't have a PID for that here but that's when your your map and your exhaust will change um, so we're gonna crank it up and we're gonna see um, if we have a change so so we have the truck uh, running and we have our exhaust pressure and it is still reading 14.1, which is not good. We have our uh, map sensor, which has went up to just a smidge. Um, like I said, it's kind of cycling. So we're gonna press the throttle and we're gonna see what these do. So 
the truck is skipping and as you can see the map has increased my EBP is still at 14.1 um, so it's not fluctuating at all um, so that's not good um, that's a problem this the EBP should be raising um, uh, just like the uh, map sensor does um, it, it's usually a little bit more than what your map sensor is as it goes up but this should be moving now that the truck is running um, but, but since it's only reading 14.1 which is what the Barrow is doing uh, my guess is that we have a problem with our uh, exhaust back pressure sensor. So uh, since that's not moving, I'm going to go get one. I'm going to pull the sensor out of my personal 6.0 truck, and I'm going to put it in here, and we're going to see if it fixes it. And then I'll show you guys what a proper sensor uh, should be doing. All right, guys. So uh, we got the sensor pulled out of, uh, of my personal truck, and... We're back at the same PIDs uh, on the truck. I've already cleared the codes, um, so we have a fresh uh, start. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna look right here again. So we have our exhaust uh, pressure. Um, it is reading 14.5 and I've seen it move um, where previously it was just reading 14.1. Um, and then we have our manifold absolute, which is 14.4. Um, this is with the key on and we have um, like I said, they're they're fairly even, so it, everything looks the same, uh, you know, and also normal. So we're going to start it up and see what happens. Alrighty, so we have the truck started, and I don't know if you guys can see, our exhaust pressure has come up to about 15 to 16. Our manifold is still at 14.3, 14.4, and this is just an idle. So we already have a change. Like I said, this, this should have been moving previously, but it was staying at 14.1 um, and not moving. Um, so that I knew that was an issue there. So now we have it at idle. Now we're gonna rev it up and I'm gonna show you guys what happens when I give it a little bit of throttle. And we're also gonna see if the truck actually revs up nicely. So. So now, we had a little spit and sputter, and now our sensor, if you watch, our EBP jumps. So, idle, revving it up. You can see how it rises. Same way with our map. So now they're both moving, and like I said, other than a little blip on the first hit, the truck is actually revving up and sounds normal now. So we're gonna give her a test drive and see what happens. All right guys, uh, one more thing while I have my uh, scan tool hooked up that, uh, like I said, um, that you'll wanna check when you're uh, having any issues with boost or your turbo system or you have this P0299 is your uh, your VGT. So on these 6.0s, the factory turbos, the vanes are known for getting stuck. So um, it's not something new, it happens a lot, um, especially with trucks that do a lot of sitting. Um, like I said, they're like, oh yeah, usually the ones that come to my shop are like, yeah, I never drive this truck. Um, it sits a lot. Um, well, what'll happen is, is when it sits, that, that VGT, the, the unison ring and the vanes, um, will actually surface rust up because they didn't make those out of uh, the correct materials, the, um, like stainless or something that wouldn't rust. So um, they will actually, you know, rust up and get stuck. Um, if you have a scan tool though, like this, you can usually go and control it. Um, and it, and it, it's even better if you have a straight pipe because it's a whole lot easier to tell when your veins are stuck. Um, usually when your veins, I think it's, uh, when your veins stick open, the truck will have a lot deeper, more, you know, diesel engine sound, and you'll kind of lose that, that high whistle, you know, turbo sound. Um, and when they get stuck closed, um, it'll usually have a lot more turbo whistle, but, but it'll kind of stutter at higher RPMs because it, it can't get the higher boost. Um, if you have a scan tool though, like this, I have the VGT pulled up, I can open and close it. And when you do this, you can hear the engine change in sound. So I'm going to open it and then I'm going to close it. 
and you can kind of hear i don't know if you guys can hear through here but you'll be able to hear a difference in the tone of the engine especially if it's a straight pipe truck you'll hear the turbo you know you'll hear a lot more uh whistle and then it'll go to a deep sounding turbo you know a deep sounding engine noise with less whistle um if, if that's happening that tell that's telling you that the veins are opening and closing whereas if you if you do it on here and you hear no change then they're probably stuck or you know they're not working properly um so that's just another little uh quick check all right guys so we just got back from uh driving the truck around um after putting in the new uh, ebp sensor and the truck is running a lot better um initially when i first hit the throttle a few times um it kind of uh blew a little bit of smoke and kind of ran about the same um and when i first drove off it's it it, it was kind of uh stuttering a little bit and blowing some smoke um but once i cleared it out um it it started operating flawlessly uh, my guess is after seeing uh the map sensor and the evp um is that there's soot everywhere in the system including the veins and the veins not being able to open and close properly due to the fact that the map sensor was not reading properly and the evp sensor was bad um the veins were probably not moving properly granted they moved with my computer um, but I'm sure that they have some soot build up considering the rest of the system does too. Um, so I'm going to give it a little bit more test driving and make sure that the veins do not, um, have any sticking issues now that the truck is running properly. If so, I'll take it out and I'll make a separate video of uh, how to clean out the veins and cleaning out, you know, getting all the soot and rust out of those. Um, but as of right now, the truck is running perfectly. So um, I hope this video will help some of you guys out if you uh, get a P2, uh, PO299 um, or you have any sort of boost issues, maybe this will help out somebody. If you have any questions, please uh, put them down in the comments and I'll try to get to them. Um, so like I said, that's all for uh, this video. Um, I appreciate you guys watching. And as always, please like and subscribe and see you guys next time.